Hello, and welcome to my channel, where I share my love of fragrance, body care, and beauty. In this video, I'll be sharing a preview of spring fragrance collections from Victoria's Secret and Pink. Thank you so much for stopping by, and let's get started. Since Victoria's Secret decided to drop a ton of spring body care on us all at once, I thought I'd do a first look with an overview of all of the new scents, similar to what I usually do for holiday, since it'll take me a little while to get through all of the review videos. Most of the collections popped up online recently all at once, and they've been spotted in store as well. My local stores never seem to put new stuff out in a timely manner, so I just went ahead and ordered online. I'm going to share an overview of each collection, as well as my initial thoughts on the scents but I'm not going to do full reviews of each fragrance in this video. I'll be filming detailed reviews for each collection once I'm able to test out each line. Since there are so many new collections, I'd love to hear from you in the comments on which you'd like to see reviews of first. Starting with Victoria's Secret Body Care, the first collection they released was Glistening Cove. I like the aquatic colors and subtle wave design on the packaging, and this was the one collection I was able to pick up earlier and have already reviewed and I'll link that video in the description box. The collection includes Siren Serenade, with notes of ocean breeze, apricot, and fresh watermelon. And this is a very fruity scent with a mix of juicy watermelon and sweet apricot. And it has a fresh, airy quality that gives it a beachy feel without being salty. Next is Shimmering Shores, with notes of coconut blooms, driftwood, and vanilla orchid. And this is a sweet, woody floral with fresh coconut and a lightly vanillic sweetness. Then there's Whispering Waves, with notes of sheer citrus, cactus water, and ripe lemon. And this is a fruity floral with sweet lily and passion fruit. And just a light touch of the lemon, as well as a watery quality. And last is Aquatic Allure, with notes of sea salt, coastal jasmine, and musk. And this is a very aquatic scent with a salty, beachy feel. It also has a strong jasmine that I find a bit too strong. And I don't really care for the combination with the salt water and musk. Shimmering Shores is my favorite in this collection, but I also like Siren Serenade and Whispering Waves. The next VS collection is the Year of the Dragon for Lunar New Year, and I think the packaging on these is really vibrant and pretty. The first scent is Peony Amber, with notes of peony flower, rich amber, and juicy black currant. So far, I like this one, and while it is floral, it's more fruity and warm, and it has a sweet, powdery quality. It actually reminds me a lot of Bath & Body Works Luminous. Next is Neroli Bergamot, with notes of Neroli Blossom, Bright Bergamot, and Warm Cedarwood. And this one is bright and citrusy, but also has some woodiness. I don't always like cedar notes, but so far it's not bad in this one. It doesn't have much sweetness, though. And the last scent is Rose Lychee, with notes of Rose Petals, Pink Lychee, and Patchouli Musk. And this is the one I was most excited for, and it does seem true to its name. It has a lot of rose combined with sweet fruity lychee, and it seems like a really pretty scent. So far, I really like Peony Amber and Rose Lychee. And the last collection on the VS side is the Vivid Blooms collection. This line has pretty pastel gradient packaging, and it feels very spring-like to me. The first scent is Bright Mariposa Apricot, with notes of Mariposa Flower, Tender Violet, and Rich Apricot. And this is coming across really sweet and fruity, with a lighter floral. Next is Lush Orchid Amber, with notes of Rich Orchid, Warm Amber, and Fresh Pear. And the pear is really noticeable in this one, but I also get some of the orchid. I'm not picking up on the amber much, and it also feels a bit green. Then there's Vibrant Blooming Passion Fruit, with notes of sunny passion fruit, rich peach, and creamy florals. And this one is really sharp, and the passion fruit seems to be overtaking the peach. The florals do add a creaminess, but it feels more fruity overall. And the last scent is Brilliant Cherry Blossom, with notes of sweet cherry, white raspberry, and sharp mandarin. And this smells like mixed fruit, with the most prominent note being cherry, followed by some citrus. I love cherry scent, so I'm happy about that, but I'll have to see how it dries down to see if the cherry lasts. None of these seem bad, but I wanted to note that while this collection might look like a floral one, it really seems more fruity than floral. So far, my favorites are Brilliant Cherry Blossom and Bright Mariposa Apricot. Moving on to VS Pink, first they released a couple of standalone scents. They added one new scent to the core pink line, which I guess is replacing Light and Happy. It's called Vanilla and Dreamy, and it has notes of fluffy vanilla, golden caramel, and coconut cloud. And with that combination of notes, it better be good. And it seems to be a fresh vanilla that also has some creaminess. The caramel comes out more over time and adds a nice sugary sweetness. 
I kind of wish they left the coconut out, and I will compare this against the other BS and pink vanilla scents because it does feel a bit familiar. And then in the pink hygiene line, they released peach, which is a glow boosting scent so all of the products have shimmer. I picked up the hair and body mist and body lotion, but there's also a body cream and body oil. These scents don't have fragrance notes, and I'm wondering if this is a repackage of Coco Peach, which they discontinued last year. It is very peachy, and I'm not getting much coconut, but it does feel similar, so I'll be sure to compare it to Coco Peach in my review. I also think the shimmer is very pretty in the bottle. Then for body care collections, first is the Pink Spring Collection, and I like the frosted bottles that they've used. It's nice to see a little something different from pink. The first scent is Vanilla Crush, with notes of pink freesia, vanilla musk, and fuzzy slippers. And this seems like a fresh vanilla scent with a bit of a syrupy quality, and the freesia isn't coming across too strong. It's not the best pink vanilla I've tried, but it's not bad either. There's something dark in it that I can't place, possibly from the syrupy note, almost like it has a toasted quality that makes it kind of smell like coffee, but not really. Next is Petal Gloss with notes of Anjou Pear, Coconut Water, and Pink Cotton Flower. And this one was a love at first sniff. I don't know where the pear is, but it just smells like candy to me. A sweet, fluffy candy with a clean, fruity touch. I do get a bit of the coconut, but it feels pretty light. And the last scent is Candy Hearts with notes of Raspberry Macaron, Sugared Praline, and Silk PJs. This is also really sweet, and the berries stand out the most, followed by the praline. It smells edible, but I'm not sure I'm really getting a macaron cookie. I do think it's really nice though. So far, I like this whole collection. Petal Gloss is a clear winner, and I also really like Candy Hearts. I need some more time though to get a full picture of Vanilla Crush. Next from BS Pink is the Pop Jelly Collection, which contains flankers of the pink core line. And this time, they seem to be both Y2K and candy themed. So I guess it feels appropriate for being released around Valentine's Day. The bottles look fun and quite sparkly, and while there's usually four scents in the Flanker collection, I've not seen any evidence that there is a Pop Jelly version of Cool and Bright. The first scent is Pop Jelly Fresh and Clean, with notes of Guava Splash, Candy Apple, and Shimmer Velour. And this is very fruity and sugary, and does have a bit of a candy apple feel, but not as much as the fall scent they had, Apple Dream. The guava feels just as strong as the apple, and it just feels like a sugary, fruity scent. Next is Pop Jelly Vanilla and Dreamy, with notes of sweet pear, pink jasmine, and bubblegum pop, but there's also clearly vanilla in here. It's like a sweeter version of the new Vanilla and Dreamy scent. I'm not getting much of the pear or jasmine, it's mostly vanilla with a bit of bubblegummy sweetness. As it dries, I get a caramel-like quality as well as a bit of fruitiness. And if you're looking for a really sweet and gourmand-leaning vanilla, I think this is one to try. And the last scent is Pop Jelly Warm and Cozy with notes of cotton candy, fluffy vanilla, and strawberry gloss. VS seems to be on a roll with cotton candy scents lately, and this one is very sweet and sugary. The strawberry adds a fruity touch, and there's a slightly creamy vanilla sweetness as well. I think people would like this line of candy scents. All the scents are good to me, but my favorite so far is vanilla and dreamy, followed by warm and cozy. And for perfume, I wanted to mention that VS has released one perfume already, and that's the Tease Valentine's Day Collector's Edition. They've released these the last couple of years with a different design each time. It's the same scent as the regular Tease, just in limited edition packaging. So it has notes of white gardenia, black vanilla, and Anjou pear. I won't be picking this up because I have the 2022 and 2023 versions. Last year, they released the Summer Bombshell Flanker pretty early, so that may be the next perfume release, unless they have a surprise spring scent to drop. So that's it for my preview of the 2024 Spring Collections from Victoria's Secret and Pink. I think there are lots of interesting new scents, and I will try to get the in-depth reviews up as soon as I can. Let me know what scents you're interested in trying, as well as which collections you want me to review first. Thank you for watching, I hope that you'll subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video!